Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another Pineapple Podcast episode of Cherry Creek Innovation Campus Production. I'm one of your hosts, Nate Barrett. And I'm Morgan Dawson. Today's guest is the former president of the International Live Events Association, and she is now the owner of her highly acclaimed and highly awarded company, Catering by Design. Whether it's catering, decor, or an easy 5,000-person picnic, her company has everything that you need to make your event as safe and easy as possible. Please welcome Ingrid Nate. Hello. So obviously you're very, very successful um, in the catering industry. What made you choose the catering industry when you were younger? Actually, I kind of fell into the catering industry. Um, I went to school in the university, uh, Valparaiso University in Indiana. Uh, wanted to get my degree in a foods merchandising and I had a business minor and I intended to come back to Colorado and go into the hotel world. But after numerous rejections from all kinds of hotels in the Denver market, um, I was working at a restaurant as a waitress. And a friend of mine who worked there asked if I would be interested in coming and be a server for this catering company in Denver. And I thought, why not? I could use the extra money and decided that I absolutely loved what I was doing. Um, and so I kind of fell into the catering world. I started as a service staff person and then moved into event captain ranks. Um, after a little while in that, I wanted to spread my wings and became the delivery supervisor for the delivery division of that company and then went into sales. And so it was really kind of an accident that I fell into catering and I really honestly never knew that catering could be a, a career. Um, in fact, I will never forget one of the gentlemen that I worked with um, said, Ingrid, you realize that this could be a career for you. It does not need to just be a job. And it was like a light bulb went off because I loved what I was doing. Loved it. That's so awesome. So what about it? Is there one specific thing or is there multiple things that just make you love it? You know, it's a really, that's a really good question. Um, I love working with people. I don't do it as much as I used to. Now in my role with a company, I'm more in the financial and uh, general management role. Uh, but I really love working with clients. I love taking what they think is their vision and expanding upon it to make it more of an event and experience as opposed to just a um, catered affair, so to speak. It is, I love working with the people. I have found that I absolutely love working in the financial side of things, which I fell into that by accident as well um, when I needed to. And it's really just kind of made my, me realize that um, being an owner of a catering company is such a wide range of different talents. And there's some things that I'm really good at and some things I'm not. I'm not as creative as I would like to be, but I have a husband for that. And so um, he gets to be the creative arm and I get to be the more uh, realistic and grounded and financial minded side of things. Um, so I just, I think it's the people. It is something new. Every single event is different from the last. No two events are ever the same. Uh, we work with a wide range of people on our team, everybody from our warehousemen to our delivery suit team to our uh, service staff, sales team, our executive team, culinary um, operations. It's just, it really is a very diverse and um, highly varied career path. Yeah. Everything is different. I loved about going through your website, cateringbd.com, by the way um is that it wasn't just catering it was like you guys threw the events you did the yeah. decor you did all the food and, and the food isn't what you would expect it was uh it was fancy it was elegant it was it was sometimes light it wasn't that heavy stuff you know you almost think of a buffet when you go to catering yeah and uh you really don't stick to that and that's what i loved and i appreciated about it you know, when we, um, in 2004, we had an opportunity to cater an event in Las Vegas for a very large conference that's very well known in the catering industry. It's called Cater Source. And the owner of the conference called us and said, we have an opportunity. Would you be willing to do this? And it was myself and my husband and my husband's executive chef, by the way, and he's a creative force. And he, we went and did this event in Las Vegas. And I have to say, um, and I'm not 
it, it, we felt like rock stars. I don't know what we did or how we did it, but people were in awe of the different materials and the food that we were putting out, as well as the display. And what we realized is that um, we want to put our name on the map and catering in general on the map as being more than just a dry chicken dinner in, or a buffet dinner. It is really our goal and our mission to make sure that every event is different and special. And we look at not just the food and what's being presented, but really rather how it's being presented to the guests to make an, every single event unique and different and special. So it's not just buffets. And I think that's where everybody thinks that catering is, is that you work out of your garage and you, um, you know, it's like the old cartoons where they drive the truck and set up a buffet and then they're done. That's, it's not like that. This career is unbelievable. We've got a 32,000 square foot warehouse um, with a decor division and a floral department and it's planning and production. It's just everything It's just so much fun. Man, like putting a Lego set together and all those pieces, that's awesome. And so if I'm not mistaken though, you're the executive chef who is your husband. You met him through catering? I did. So when I came back to Denver, so I was in Denver working as a catering for a catering company, um, had an opportunity to move to Wisconsin and was there for about 18 months and decided I wanted to come back. I missed my family. I'm a native of Colorado and um, started with this very small startup catering operation and hired or interviewed our executive chef who turned out to be my husband eventually. So interviewed him for a job and he got two jobs. <laughs> pretty good. That's a great yeah, it worked out. It worked out pretty well. <laughs> and then we had the opportunity to buy the company um, about six years later and um, moved into our space, like I mentioned, in 2007. And you've never left. Never left. You actually bought the company that you were catering with. Correct. It was a management buyout. So we bought, my husband and I bought the company from the previous owners. Awesome. And it's turned out, I mean, you have so many awards. I, I was going to ask about that. Uh, 2020, you got the best caterer of the year. And then I think best catered event. Yes. Okay. Was that during the pandemic or was that before? No, it was for work that we had produced in 2019. Okay. Um, so they do the awards events uh, in usually March and you do it for the previous year. Okay. Yeah. So okay. yes, it was work that we did in 2019. Right. And yeah, but you got awards going back to uh, 2017, right? We, we actually go back a lot further than that, but it tends, it starts to get a little overwhelming. Yeah, too, <laughs> awards. Isn't that a great problem to have? It is. It is a great problem to have. Yeah. And looking on your website, the, Every event, you can tell there's so much effort put into it. And just the photography is amazing. But yeah. going into each event, do you try and make one drastically different than the other one? So you're not repeating the same format? Um, you know what? We don't try to make it different. However, it inherently becomes different because this bride loves pineapples and pink. The next bride loves royal blue and gold. And um, this corporate client wants to do a brand launch with their brands, which may be any rainbow of colors. So we really look to the space for inspiration as well as the client and to find out what their kind of, you know, kind of like when you look at a house decor, are you transitional, modern, contemporary, um, traditional? We kind of do the same things with our clients to find out what, what their vibe is and we try and make every event different for them so yes it's different and we try to make it special for them but inherently just kind of that just happens because every event is every client is different and so what i'm hearing is that caterings are really good for not having every day be the same would you oh agree with that no day is ever the same it's and no event is ever the same wow. and no issues that we have because we have issues out on site. You know, yeah. we dropped a hot box that includes, you know, this 
the sauce for the chipotle cream meatballs how do you figure it out so no event is the same no space is the same even if you've been in a, a venue previously you transfer you transform it into something else that is for the client and that's i think one of the things that's so fun about catering is that you're not working in your own building you're going elsewhere which has its own problems and own challenges to figure out um, but then you get into the site and the freight elevator is not working or um, the, the bathrooms aren't working. You know, it just everything is different and it's always it has a challenge. We like to say we MacGyver our way through it and yeah. we make it work. Yeah. So going into that, are those like experiences, the elevator not working and the... Oh, okay. Without question. I have one one quick story. Once I had a, this was way back when, when I was a service staff or an event manager, um, we were working, we were doing a party and it was like on the third story of an apartment complex. And our kitchen was actually in the fire escape. So the back stairwells that went down and it was a birthday celebration. And I pulled the cake out of the box and put it on top of the box and it had raspberry sauce that was needed. So I pulled that out of the box and stuck it on the box and pushed and the cake fell down the, the stairs four, three levels and it fell at the bottom and splat. I mean, it was like destroyed. And this is somebody's birthday cake. I mean, I was mortified. Luckily they were very forgiving, but those types of things happen all the time. Oh all the time. Went into making that better. Uh, what went into it to yeah. make it better? Yeah. Um, we actually we had to run to the store and we had to find a cake that was suitable for a birthday celebration. Of course, we had to tell the clients, um, but it was luckily they were very kind. Um, so we made it better. We did another event, really another quick story, if you don't mind, um, did an event in Texas, in Dallas, Texas. And we were on our way down. The trucks had left on a Tuesday morning. Tuesday night at about seven o'clock, uh, we had two trucks that were on their way down full of food and full of decor. And Tuesday night, we get a phone call at about seven o'clock that the trucks were in a windstorm near Amarillo. Oh. And one of the trucks fell over, was blown over. And it was the one that had all the food in it. So my husband got in the car with our director of operations. They drove down to Amarillo to basically get another truck, transfer all the product that was savable or salvageable back into the new truck to get it down to Dallas. I flew to Dallas the next morning and then the rest of our team flew to Dallas as well. We met on site, um, made contact with a Cisco rep, which is a food purveyor in Dallas. They were able to get us replacement product. Um, really, it was pretty amazing. There, there was a very nominal, uh, nominal product that was destroyed. It was like a tomato explosion, um, but the client never knew. Yeah. We never told the client. The client didn't find out until the party was over. And we had told them the story of what had happened and what had taken to salvage. And the party was for 2,500 people. Oh, so it was um, it was one of those that you just kind of, you just have to take a deep breath and say, we've got to figure this out. There's, you can't fail. You can't turn back. So, what was their yeah. Reaction? Were they completely in shock? They just said, I, I can't believe that you made this happen after that. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. It was one of our, it was one of those like attaboys for us. I mean, because it was, we all had to pull together and there was, I think, 15 of our core team members down there. And then we had brought in other staff from Dallas, um, but we made it happen. So it was fun. Really, travel involved in catering as well. Yeah. Yeah, probably not as much as we do. Um, okay. And we don't, we travel maybe, I mean, we travel around Colorado quite a bit. Totally. Going out of the state is we do that probably two or three times a year. So not as much and not as not a whole, there's not a lot of catering companies that actually travel by rule. Um, we happen to have some clients that absolutely love us and want to take us with us take us with them. So that's how we do. Yeah. As I've seen, I mean, people are loving you guys in the reviews. There's articles written about you guys. It's awesome. Oh, thank you. We have fun. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Yeah. So you work with convention hotels a lot. Have you ever worked with the Gaylord? 
Actually, we can do decor in the Gaylord, but we cannot work in the hotel itself as a catering company because they have um, their own food service operators and they have situations where they work with other vendors that have contracts there. We have been in the Gaylord and we have worked in the Gaylord. It is not a common occurrence for us, um, but we will do a decor in the Gaylord and other hotels around Denver. And does that ever pose a struggle? Like where you do the events, is that ever a problem with the client or are, do, are they already aware of where you can come in and do what you need to do? Yeah, I think when someone goes to hotel, they pretty much are aware that they have to use the in-house providers for food. Um, when they're, they can bring in outside vendors. If the hotel property does not have a contract with an outside provider or outside vendor, they, the clients can bring in whoever they'd like. And it's not a problem. It's just finding out how, where to load in the, you know, sometimes the hotels have unions. So you have to work with the union rep to make sure that you're not infringing on union rules. Um, power, you have to figure out the power. So it's not difficult. It's just, you have to plan a little differently. Is there a fee that comes with that too? Like the first, let's say uh, the Botanic Gardens going there, is there a fee Do they charge you um, for the customer? In, to the customer, the customer pays a, a fee to rent the space, okay. and then we go in and cater there. We don't have to pay a fee. Okay, that matters. Going into COVID, because catering, obviously every catering company has been affected, uh, what, were your what were your first thoughts when COVID really started to pick up about a year ago? That's crazy. Well, first of all, I didn't think that it was going to last very long. I was pretty sure we were going to be back up and running by May 15th, and then the skies were going to open up, and we're going to be back at business as usual. Um, clearly, that has not happened. Yeah. So it didn't. I didn't expect it was going to take this long, um, to be quite honest. I was very optimistic, and... I actually did a panel discussion with two gentlemen from the same industry, but they were event producers and both predicted it was going to be at least a year. And I thought they were crazy. So um, what does a virtual event look like? I'm really interested in that. What, what does that entail? Are you delivering food? So yes, a virtual event is when a client has decided that they want to have an event of some kind for their clients, for their Yes, um, whether it's a nonprofit fundraiser or maybe a corporate or even a bride that wants to take to have some kind of Zoom event. Um, our portion of it is we work with the client to, to determine a menu. Uh, we set up a square site or a online ordering system where the, they, the client gives a link to their guests the guests can go on and register. They register for the event itself and then get the link and then they can go on and order the menu that they want. And clearly we, we reduce the selection. So we say the client has chosen this entree, this entree, or this entree. And um, you can select whatever you'd like and we'll package it up and then we deliver it there or ship it. And we've done a lot of shipping as well. Um, we have curated boxes where like we did a charcuterie box that we shipped 500 of them around the United States. And which it was another challenge in itself. You just learn these things as you go along. Um, post Posting and mailing doesn't, isn't quite the same as hand delivering, but we're figuring it out and made some mistakes along the way. Enter the food explosion in the box when we didn't put the right amount of stuffing around all the product. Um, so yeah, that's, and then typically a client will have a Zoom event just like you see, like when you go to class, um, sometimes it'll be involved fundraisers. Uh, sometimes it requires a lot of production efforts from an AV, AV company, audiovisual company that helps orchestrate the flow and different feeds from different areas. Our portion of it, though, is strictly on the menu and ordering side. Okay, not decor then. Typically, not very much decor on a on a on an event like that no um unless the client needs a backdrop behind their stage so that they're doing the video feed and they need something behind them we'll do something a little bit in that arena but not much more than that 
So like with virtual times, have you taken more to social media to do, to, um, to promote, to promote, promote the business? It's yeah, it seems like it's hard. I'm learning a lot about social media and marketing right now. Um, it's difficult to be able to engage the client when everybody's at home. So, you know, our past was email marketing was our, and MailChimp, you know, sending out email blasts was our primary mode of getting mass word out there. Um, social media is great, but it's only as good as the number of follows that you have, followers that you have. I am, I do not profess to be a social media giant. That is not my forte. Um, in fact, I ended up taking it off my phone just because I, I, I don't like seeing what other people are doing. It gives me a FOMO. <laughs> Man, I have to say, I agree with you. I think it's a struggle during COVID, but I must say whoever's in charge of it or whatever is going on, they're doing it right because I go on the Instagram page, Catering by Design, and uh, it's just awesome. I mean, the colors blow me away. The dishes blow me away. I mean, everything is just amazing. It's immaculate. Everything is just great. Well, thank you. We've got our graphic designer and lead digital marketing um, agent. We, our, our team member that does our digital marketing uh, takes care of that for us. And I'm very relieved because I wouldn't know the first thing about what to post or when to post it. So she really takes that and runs with it. And do you have, because all of the photos are just so aligned with each other. They all have like the same saturation, all this stuff. So do you have an on-hand photographer on your team? Actually, my husband is a photographer. Um, so he's an executive. Like I said, he's creative, but he's also, uh, he's a fantastic photographer and does a lot of our photos. What he does not take, we get from our vendor partners so we'll have a photographer that will go out to a wedding and we share social media you know posts and links and tags tags their photos so we really um band together with our vendor partners to make sure that we're putting you know new and different out there as much as we can but my husband does take a lot of the photos and we've got a couple other team members that are really good with photos so not only is catering a good career path in general, but it sounds like there's a lot of different things you can go into. It is um, extreme. It can be extremely varied. So we have we have our warehousemen who work in the warehouse. They gather all the events, make sure that the dishes and all the components are clean and ready to go out for the next event. We have a, a woodworker or master craftsman that builds some of our our buffets equipment and as well as our furniture for decor. Um, our culinary team, we've got a pastry chef, we've got a pastry team, we've got uh, executive sous, people that are actually cooks and executive sous and our exec chef de cuisine. Um, we've got a sales team, graphic designer, um, staffing coordinator, trainings, uh, service staff trainers, we've got our service staff, event managers, uh, we've got a re two units out of the Denver Botanic Garden. So we've got team members that work in our two restaurants, um, finance and audit, human resources. I think that's pretty much, I mean, those are the, the, by and large, the different types of career paths within our company and within catering in general. Yeah. And a lot of people don't even think about it because hospitality, when I was a, I was a sophomore, when I heard about this CCIC and like the hospitality program they have going on here, I didn't realize until I got to class how many different sub sub jobs there are, sub careers, yeah. and within that, so many different options you could go into. Like there's financing. You don't. I didn't even think about financing <laughs> going into hospitality, and now I have like ten different options for majors to go into college, and I'm like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's just, it's, it's more than just cooking, without question. So based on your experience, for those young leaders listening today, what is the number one thing they can be doing to get involved in, in the catering? Number one thing they can do to get involved? Um, really just consider it as, a, as an opportunity. Um, it is 
I think folks tend to think about restaurants and hotels only if they want to go into the hospitality world. Um, really open your eyes to the catering side of things. Start at the beginning, become a service staff in a catering company or work in the warehouse or um, work in the kitchen, prepping vegetables. I, I would say that I think if there was one thing that I would recommend all people that are starting out in this world, in this industry, whether it's catering or hospitality in general, is just make yourself indispensable. You know, really um, look for things that need to be done. Just keep your eyes open. Don't just stand there and wait for someone to tell you what to do. Look for op things that need to be done. If the floor is dirty, grab a broom and sweep it. You know, if a client looks like they're lost, ask them if you can help find whatever they're looking for. Um, there's just, just look for opportunities to keep busy is a huge piece of advice, especially in our world, because you don't, you can't just say it's not my job yeah. because at an event, everything we do is everybody's job, whether it's shoveling the sidewalk or um, helping the bride zip up her dress or cleaning the bathrooms. I mean, there's just the, unloading the truck. We all have to do play our part and we all have to carry our own bag. I know managers appreciate that a lot yes. too, huh? The bosses when they, cause you know, when you might have to tell an employee, if you got time to lean, you got time to clean. <laughs> right? <laughs> exactly. So they come up to you and they're like, uh, what do, what, do, what do I do? Yeah. What? I got nothing to do right now. I'm like, you have nothing to do? Do you see this place is a mess? There's a hundred different <laughs> things you could be doing. Yeah, there's little. always something to do. Yeah. Precisely. Yeah. Well, I just want to say on behalf of the Pineapple Podcast, we are extremely thankful that you uh, yes. cut time out of your busy, busy schedule to talk to us. And we both had a lot of fun planning this and talking to you. Yes, I was so excited to talk to you. I think... Yeah. Because catering, you know, when you think about it, it's something in most people's minds, I would argue, but your company seems like it takes it to another level. I haven't seen, the only other company I've uh, dealt with is the Colorado one, the Colorado Catering Company. Uh -huh. They're more of a buffet style that mm -hmm. I've come into contact with. Yours is like, like I said, it's elegant. It's, it's not heavy. It's light and the it seems so friendly, so inviting. It seems perfect. Like if I was going to have an event, I would come to you because it seems like it would not go wrong. Nothing would be wrong. As far well, as <laughs> thank you. You know, one of the things that we learned as we were growing the company is you have to, you have to do what you do best. Um, and you can't be everything to all people because it's just not possible to do all things really well. And we used to do the delivery business. We realized that we were spending more time apologizing for the driver showing up late because they got stuck in a traffic jam or the, you know, the loading dock was full. We couldn't get into the loading dock. We just realized that we excelled at doing big events and fun events and creative, that's kind of our stake in the ground is we're creative and we love it um, because we've done the other and we just, there are companies that do it really, really, really well. Yeah. We just are, that's just not our niche. We like the big ones. <laughs> Although I will say though, it's been interesting with through COVID is yeah. you learn to be humble and you learn to appreciate what you have. And um, I, re I realized that we need to diversify a little bit more so that when corporate kind of goes down the toilet because they can't meet, you don't have much else to do. And yeah. so when you kind of put yourself into this, this niche market, um, when the other stuff goes away, you're kind of stuck with nothing. So what that's one of the lessons that we've learned is we need to diversify and make sure that we're keeping our book of business buried in different markets. And to go on that, are you expecting a, a big return with uh, as far as your catering goes? You know, are you expecting um, a lot more events after this? Because when we come out, we feel like we will rebound and get back to where we were. It probably will not be until the end of 2022 till yeah. we get back to the size that we were, we think. Yeah. Um, and that is one of our goals is to make sure that when we do 
come out of this, that we're ready to hit the ground running. Yeah. You know, we have to sales team, we're bringing some of our sales team back right now and um, really kind of going after the future client because you, we have to be able to be prepared to hit the ground running when we finally can. And so was this vaccine big news for you guys then? It is because I think it builds consumer confidence. Yeah. Yes. Once we can open up again, folks will be, and corporate is the biggest, you know, they don't want to have yeah. put all their employees in jeopardy or whatever. A bride is a little bit different. Brides are a little bit more, I don't want to say selfish, but it's about them. Yeah. Where corporate has to think about their guests and, yeah. you know, really be in tune to it. So, um, Yes. And so obviously your company is very safe on very safe events. What moving forward are you seeing that you guys are going to stay in place? What are you going to keep implementing? We'll probably do as far as types of business, the curated box. Um, uh -huh. The interesting thing is food service in general is a very safe spot, right? Good. Safety and sanitation. You have to be you have to be clean, you have to provide a safe working environment, you have to treat the food well and properly. So we've always been about safety and sanitation. Really the only difference that we've had to implement are masks and wearing gloves and san you know, hand sanitizer. So I don't think our operation has changed that much. A lot of it is really just taking it just one notch further with the masks. So I don't think it's gonna change too much on what we do um, because food service in by and large has been this way to begin with. I tell you, I'll get, I'll be really excited to get rid of all the disposable goods. We were getting so, okay. um, you know, so yeah. the community was getting in line with not throwing away product and not generating trash. And now we're generating more and more trash. It yeah. kills me. Okay. Yeah. Cause that was more my question. It was more like, are you thinking of wearing masks in the future? And are you thinking of keeping single use items, plastics, but it's good. I will get rid of single use as soon as we can. I totally agree with that. It was, we were getting to a point where it was like single use is not the way to go. And now it's like, you have to. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, and masks, I think inherently will go away as soon as they yeah. can. I just don't think people like it very much. I, I, I understand the benefits of it, but I think, you know, I'll be in public sometimes and, you know, when you speak to somebody with a mask on, you can hardly tell. You don't realize the social cues that come with the... Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just one last question. Do you have any advice for the future leaders watching right now? Um, Whether it's life advice or career advice, it doesn't... The youngins, yeah. they want to... <laughs> you're an experienced person. They want to hear from you. What advice um, for the youngins? I will say, don't, when you come out of school, whether it's high school or college, don't automatically think that you're going to skyrocket to the CEO position. There's a lot of growth and learning that comes along with the territory of starting at, at a lower position and working your way up. Yeah. Um, that's how I started in this catering operation. And I would never have known as much as I do if I hadn't started at the bottom and worked my way up. So there is no shame in that, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Be yeah. prepared for it because um, unless you are coming out with some kind of in incredible, I don't even know what it is, you're gonna start at a lower level. Just be okay with it and know that it's part of the stepping stones. It's not, there's, there's no shame in not coming out of college and earning $150,000 a year. Yeah. It's, you need to work your way up and it takes time. So just work hard to make yourself indispensable, I guess. Hello, everybody, and thank you for watching this episode of the Pineapple Podcast. I'm one of your hosts. I'm Morgan. And I'm Nate Barrett. We wanted to give a warm thank you to today's guest, Ingrid Nagy. If you'd like to keep up with her company, go to cateringbydesignco.com or go to cateringbydesignco on Instagram or Facebook. And if you wanted to keep up with the Pineapple Podcast, make sure to follow us on all of our social medias at Pineapple Podcast CCIC. And that's going to be on TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. Again, that's Pineapple Podcast CCIC on TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. Stay tuned, guys. Stay tuned.